Let's go to low power here. So here's a skin biopsy from, I think it's from the leg. You can see this is a, a nodule. They've kind of had a pedunculated nodule that they've shaved off. And the whole surface, uh, the epidermis is mostly ulcerated and replaced by a thick layer of purple-pink um, crust. So crust is the kind of scabby stuff that you see clinically. It's made uh, microscopically, uh, scab or crust is made of fibrin and neutrophils usually, and sometimes some parakeratosis mixed in. So a closer look, the bright pink is uh, fibrin. Um, from the, the serum, the blood's kind of leaked out and all of the fibrin is coagulated to stop the bleeding. And then all those little dark specks you see in there, those are all neutrophils. So tons of neutrophils. And so this is what we often see on top of any sort of ulceration on the skin. And then also sometimes you can even see little, uh, little it's a little hard to show here, but little purple bacterial colonies. And um, depending on the setting, I don't get too worked up about those little purple bacterial colonies because they're, they're a normal component of skin flora that overgrow the surface of any ulcer. Um, there are some settings where I, where I pay attention to those, but most of the time that's just kind of an incidental finding. So let's go back to lower power and see what's actually going on here. So when we look down in the dermis, let's go to real low power. First of all, the epidermis looks very thick and, and looks like it's kind of growing downward and also you could, you could really start thinking that this might be like a squamous cell carcinoma that's really ulcerated and inflamed. And this is actually not squamous cell carcinoma, this is another example of reactive pseudoepitheliomatous hyperplasia, reactive epidermal overgrowth in response to an inflammatory process. And um, one clue is the presence of these kind of collections of neutrophils that are trapped within the epidermis. Um, or within the squamous epithelium. So I think whenever I see that, you can see that in squamous carcinomas, but anytime I see little aggregates or pustules filled with neutrophils trapped down in the middle of kind of a thick, glassy squamous epithelium, I always stop and think, is there any chance this could be infectious or reactive rather than squamous cell carcinoma? So it's worth taking a closer look. Sometimes I'll do a fungal stain or something because there's a variety of things that can cause reactive epidermal hyperplasia that can really closely mimic squamous cell carcinoma. Let's see if we can figure out what's causing the reactive epidermal hyperplasia here. And there we have it. These are little perfectly round, thick-walled structures that are kind of a brown color. Uh, these are actually fungal uh, organisms. So these are called, um, people uh, call them uh, sclerotic bodies or medlar bodies. Or um, if you want to be kind of funny, you can call them copper pennies because they look like uh, uh, American uh, coins, pennies that are made of, that have a copper coating. And so here's some more of them there. And these are actually dematiaceous, melanin producing pigmented fungi. And there's a variety of species that can, um, of uh, pigmented fungi that can involve, um, infect humans. And uh, one of the, the more common ones uh, here is um, Exophiala wernickii. Uh, or I think Fonsatia Wernicke is an alternative name for it. I always forget which one's the more recent name. But there's a variety of others and they vary depending on where you are in the world. But um, this is called chromoblastomycosis. And chromoblastomycosis is actually not the name of the fungal, fungal species or, or genus, but it, it's just the pattern that when we see these, these um, copper penny looking, these, uh, these pigmented fungi, uh, fungal um, round organisms that we call this chromoblastomycosis. And these often are from traumatic inoculation, like you're you know, out working in your garden or something and you, you uh, get your, you know, your foot or your leg stabbed with a, a dirty stick. And then these fungi live all over in the environment, at least in, in my part of the world where we have warm weather and a lot of rain and a lot of damp, um, wet um, wood material outside. So there, a lot of things are covered in um, these fungal organisms. And if you get stabbed with it and get a penetrating injury, then the fungal organisms can start to grow kind of opportunistically within the dermis. And there's a lot of inflammatory change and then all this reactive squamous proliferation over top of it. So when you see this pseudoepitheliomatous reactive change with a bunch of inflammation, particularly neutrophils or, and or granulomas, always look around and see if you can find some pigmented fungi. So if they are these round um, uh, spore-like structures that have, um, that have the uh, 
brown color. We call it chromoblastomycosis. Sometimes you see pigmented hyphae instead of these round uh, sclerotic bodies, and when there's pigmented hyphae, we call it pheohyphomycosis. But chromoblastomycosis and pheohyphomycosis are both um, basically skin infections by dermatiaceous pigmented fungi, and they both cause this reactive epidermal change, and they're both caused by a variety of different um, a fungal species that produce their own pigment. So you can see that the the um, the fungal organisms are actually being kind of exuded here in the um, in the exudate that's coming out and draining out of this wound or out of this ulcerated lesion. And let's see, they're usually often in, embedded down in the dermis and also within these little cysts. So when you see the the kind of cystic area with a bunch of neutrophils, always look closer on those areas. See there they are. There's some. There's some there. You look over there, there's more. And there's also some histiocytes forming little granulomas around them. So that's a useful place. Look where the neutrophils and where the granulomas are because that's often where you'll find the fungus. So here you don't even have to do any special stains. You can use PAS or GMS, which will stain these fungi. You can also use Fontana Masson, which is a melanin stain. It's a silver stain that turns melanin from brown into black. But you don't really need that here. These are really obvious even on H&E, so you don't have to do any special stains. But if, you, if you're struggling to find organisms, there are other non-pigmented forms of fungi that can cause epidermal reactive changes, particularly like blastomycosis. And so you can use special stains sometimes in that setting. And again here, just more, uh, just amazing example, floridly infected with um, these brown fungal organisms here. Let's see if I can get the light adjusted so you can see the brown color a little better. And uh, the, they're fungi because they have real thick walls and they're perfectly round. So I find that really helpful. The, the really sharp delineation of the, the organisms I think is helpful in de determining things that are actually fungi versus other mimics. So a real nice example of chromoblastomycosis.